Good morning. I am Jean with Kept in Stitches. Welcome. It is a bright, sunny day this morning. Cold, but at least the sun is shining. Good morning. Welcome, Vicki. It is great to see you in the chat this morning. And I am doing okay. How are you doing? And Vicki says that she is so excited. Her fabric order from Missouri Star Quilts is out for delivery, so you will get it today. That's awesome, Vicki. It's always exciting to be getting a fabric order. Um, and Joyce is here. Good morning, Joyce. It is great to see you. And Debbie Williams is also here. Good morning, Debbie. Welcome. And Tracy is here. Mona is here. All those green stitching friends are popping up. Lori Clark is here, just getting home from work. Ooh, okay. So I bet you are tired if that's the case. And Carol Rouchot is also here. Welcome, welcome. And Sandra Ryle, real, Sandra Real, I remember that now, is here. Good morning to you, Kathy from Kathy's Quilts and Crafts is here. Good morning. Loretta is here. Yes, the sun is beautiful this morning. All right. So, a lot of you all popping in this morning. Love to, love to see you. And this morning um which fridays are the day to showcase everything quilty going on with captain stitches so i will and it's april the first week in april so i will be sharing and working on april's block for our block of the month um sharing with you how to put that block together and then I will also, since it is the beginning of the second quarter of the year, we'll be um, talking about our second quarterly quilt stitch along project and um, sharing what will be the assignments for the months of April, May and June for that project as well. But exciting things going on. Let me make sure I haven't missed anyone. Danielle is in. Good morning, Danielle. My dear, dear daughter, Danielle. Great to see you. And there is my sister, Debbie. Welcome, welcome, Debbie. It is great to see you this morning, too. All righty. So I'm going to take another drink of coffee. It's actually chai this morning, but hey, almost the same as. Don't forget to smash the like. Yes. Ah, oh, don't, don't, don't be to be too hard on it. Just tickle that like button. Button is what I like to say. Tickle that thumbs up. Okay. So let me uh bring in our other camera also it's like okay i was looking in the wrong spot it's like where'd it go thought i lost it there for a minute but here you will see the block for april and for those of you that are up late at night or were already checking out the facebook group this morning you may have noticed that this block was dropped in the files section late last night so you now have the information for april's block and April's block is being done a little bit differently this month. I gave you two options on that. And if you are a member of the Stitching Friends, you actually got that pattern released early. So you've already seen it. And I believe there is one that has already made the block. So that is also also, and Andrea is here with us. Good morning, Andrea. It is great to see you as well. But this is the actual block, which is Grandmother's Puzzle. And you can make it as a standalone 12-inch block, which that is what all the blocks are that are in the block of the month. Or there is a bonus pattern because if you make this in a 6-inch block and you rotate, make four of them and rotate them, you end up with this awesome star with a churn dash block in the middle. So that is the one that I will be making and focusing on as the actual block of the month for April. But you will find out that this block, if you look at it, you can see, and I'm going to 
spot like that so we can see it better. If I can, oh, well, I have to remove myself. Hopefully I clicked on the right one. Okay, there we are. But if you look at this block, you notice there is no seam that goes continually through this way or a seam that goes continuously through this way. That means we have to do a partial seam in this block. And some of you may be a little bit intimidated with a partial seam by making four six inch blocks and will choose just to make the one block. But who wants, and some of you will, might make both, but who wants to miss out on this beautiful block? So I am going to show you how to put that together this morning. And I'm going to make sure that I haven't missed anything in the chat. Okay, so Vicki and Danielle having a little chat there together and Judy Hebert just jumped in. But this is the block that we will be working on. And to save time, since the four of these are identical, there's four of the six inch blocks that end up making the 12 inch block. I have already, to save time, put three of the blocks together. So this is three fourths of the block. This is just part of the next block lying under it. That will be the one that we will be putting together. But that, this right, whoops, we'll pick this one up. Those two are already sewn together. This is the individual block itself. And that is finishes at six inches right now. It's six and a half, of course, unfinished, six inches finished. So I'm going to lay that aside and this one that is our top row for now and here you will see the block laid out yes it looks a little bit different because so you can see what you want to um, piece together we are going to be piecing the two um, little corner sections together which let me bring in so we can share that as we do that, we are going to be piecing this section and this section separately together. And then we are going to be, if I move this, we're going to move this apart a little because this is going to be done in two sections. This section is the same as these two. So we are going to piece that one together at the same time. And then we will add this onto that. And that leaves this section down here which you will notice this is going to have to fit in here. And that is where the partial seam will be. And these will be where that partial seam is. So let's get started on the block and show you how that is. And if you take it, like I always say, if you take everything step by step, nothing is hard. <laughs> it just looks hard when you see it all together at once. And I'm going to try and set that off, but to the side where I can see it. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to take this little square and we are going to sew the two triangles onto both sides of that. And the thing that you want to keep in mind when you are doing this, don't worry about this little overhang down here. You want to make sure that you're keeping the 90 degree angle straight and even. That's what you want to focus on and make sure that's straight so that when you have your block, the edges are straight and straight for the next portion of the block to be sewn onto. So we are going to do that first. And I guess I better bring in the sewing machine or you won't be able to see me sewing <laughs> okay so we're going to put that under there and with our quarter inch seam we are going to stitch straight down that and i bobbled off just a little bit And we are going to press that towards our red block. And then to make sure that we get that in the right position, we are going to lay it back up here to make sure that we have our triangle going the correct way. 
And now we are going to take and we are going to add this one on the other side. And we are working with bias. So you want to kind of, when you are putting that together, stay away from this edge and just line everything up up here gently. And I'm going to turn that over and sew it from this side and add that. And Terry Amston is with us also. Good morning, Terry. And we are going to cross that away. And do you see that? We did not line that up well. I am going to actually get Josephine uh, the Ripper out, and I'm going to remove that because that is not lined up correctly at all. This one is too short, and we are going to cut off our point if we sew that that way. So we are going to remove that and do that over. Not exactly sure how I got that, that off, but Definitely did not sew that correctly. So off it comes to be redone. Cannot have it off that much. There is no, no fudging to that one. It's like if I'm going to make a mistake, I'm going to make a good mistake. <laughs> okay, let's try that one more time. And again, I'm going to... Line it up to make sure that I put it correctly. And I just must have really, really missed my, where I wanted to be on that. <laughs> no can do. Try it again. Vicky says she thinks she will stay with English paper piecing. And Loretta says she just wanted to join the fun. And Danielle says, ooh, Mama Jean bringing out Josephine. Dum, dum, dum. Yes. And I don't know why it was. Why it was off that much. And it's not looking that much differently. It may be the first one that I, that I, there we go. That's better. Much better. And I'm pressing over on the hard surface with my with my fingertips. Okay. So we have that there. And I am going to trim off those little dog ears right there. Little tips, whatever you refer to them as. We don't want those in there. And now we are going to take... And we are going to sew the bottom portion on there. And again, you want to make sure that you line it up on the 90 degree edges. Make sure that they are correct. You don't want to mess with that bias. And of course, it moves the minute you bring it over to the sewing machine. Get it under there so it'll hold in place, and then I will will line it up. We are still off just a little bit, but I am going to fudge that. So, and we are going to press that towards our green triangle. And put it back in position where it goes, just showing you how that is. I am going to trim these little corners off. 
place it right back there. And now we are going to do this one the exact same way without bringing out Josephine, hopefully. <laughs> so we don't want to do it the exact same. And of course, when your needle hits that valley where that straight and the point matches, you know that you've got that correct. And I'm just finger pressing this open. Lay it back here again so you know you have it in the correct position before picking that up. Flip this one over. Make sure you got it correct. And we will sew that one on. So I know that, um, and she's not here yet, but like I said, I do know that um, one of the members has her block completed already in beautiful purples. And I'm going to finger press this and then show you how much, what that first one should have. Whoopsie. There we go. How much better that comes together there than that first one did. That's how they are all supposed to turn out. And then trim those two little ends off, set it in position, flip that over, and now piece that together. And if you piece it with this side on top, you can see where that little X is. So you won't cut off the point of your square when you are sewing that together. Little tip that helps in not cutting the tips off your points. And Danielle says, okay, my guess is Auntie Debbie Williams would be the one that, no, your guess would be wrong, Danielle. <laughs> I, I don't think Debbie even has her fabrics chosen or cut yet. But, and I'm going to give that a press. And again, I'm going to cut those two tips off right there. And we will put it, where is my, yeah. which one of these squares I ended up, I don't know how, but I got it turned this way and had already sewn my partial seam when I found it out. So I ended up having to do two partial seams because I had to take that out and redo it. <laughs> Not fun. So make sure you keep it laying in the correct direction. Now this one right here is the same as these two. So we are going to do it next the same way. Oh, shucks, she said. Uh, yes, I did print the... Uh, I did print it out just for grins and giggles with the foundation paper piecing, but but we are going to do this the traditional way. Of course, if you want to do it, figure it out and do it foundation paper piecing, you most certainly can have at it. And again, lay it back in position so that you make sure that you get your other triangle on in the correct order. And 
And when I refer to um, that valley, when you are stitching these, when your needle comes down, it should end up right in that little V where this angle meets and your little point left over from the other one there meets. If that needle comes right in the middle of that, you know that you hit it right where it's supposed to be and everything should line up correctly then. And Andrea says, when we are finished with the series, are we putting them all together as a quilt? Um, it's, I guess I wouldn't call it a series. I just call it a, a block of the month. And of course, there's 12 of them because there's 12 months in a year. So at the end of the year, um, there will not be, because this is a sampler, um, it's not, you know, a pattern per se. It is just 12 blocks, you will be able to put that together in whatever setting and however you want to put them together. Everybody's quilts can end up can end up different because that will be the maker's choice on how they want to put that together. <laughs> Debbie says, hope it's not me. I do have the pattern, but need fabrics. Right. <laughs> yeah, Danielle was guessing that it was was you, Debbie. <laughs> but nope, you you do not have it have it ready yet and no I haven't I haven't seen her in here yet this morning so but now we're going to stitch that one on there and again stitch it from this side so we can watch where that x is so we don't cut our point off And we are going to get that to come down here. You want it slow up as you get to that and go just a little to the inside of that X. Oh, you said, nope, it's not me, not hope it's not me. <laughs> I just noticed that. Sorry about that, Debbie, read that wrong. And Michelle with Michelle's Crafts and More is here this morning. Welcome to you. And I'm pressing that also. And I'm going to trim those two little corners off there. And this, of course, is going to go with these. So now we are going to sew the one side on. And I'm just going to finger press that over, lay it back down. We'll take this, piece that onto there. Which it's adding our square to our rectangle instead of this onto there, but... <laughs> And of course, we want to make sure that we press that seam in the opposite direction of the other one so that it butts. And now we're going to add this to this. And I think I will stick a pin in there just to make sure that doesn't, doesn't move on me. Make sure that our seams butt up and come together there correctly.
and I don't take my pen out until I get to it, but I do not sew over them. And Michelle says, hi, Danielle. Hubby is getting his stuff together so he can run to the post office for me and then head to visit his brother this weekend. Ooh, does that mean you're going to have a, a weekend to yourself, Michelle? And I finger press that, so now I will give the whole thing a little better press before I stick it up there so now we have that corner done this corner done and this corner done and here's the fun one down here <laughs> and we can see that we are going to break this down by separating these out a little so you can see that this part right here is the same as what we did up here so we are going to sew that together first and I'm going to go ahead and sew that square on there first this time which way did I press that or it's the white on the other. Okay. And this is where you very quickly see that right there is where that partial seam is going to end up. Really that back in place. Did you see how I almost put that down in the wrong place? Now we're going to take this and sew that onto our triangular piece. And we will soon be getting to the fun part. And Kelly's Quilts and Crafts group, Kelly's Quilts and Cruises <laughs> is also here this morning. Welcome to you. And I... Impressing that so that you can still have that tip there to line up when we sew these on. We don't want to cut that off yet. And we're going to put that back in place. And now we are going to stitch those two together. And again, I'm going to put one pin in there to hold where those seams line up in a butt together It seems so quiet stitching this this morning. I know you're you're all there, but it just seems very, very quiet. I'm gonna press that. And you see where I did it so that both those tips are still pressed out so that I can line that up with stitching these on. And the way that we are going to do this is we are going to line that up. We were going to line this one up. But if we sewed this all the way across, there would be no way to join this in there because that would be sewn. And we need to, and I'm going to stick a pin in here so that you will can see that. 
we are just going to partially sew both sides of these. And I will do the same on this one, making sure that you line it up with that other tip. And then I will get my hand out of your way. And I am going to remove this for just a second so you can see what we are going to do here a little bit better. That brings it a little bit closer. But we are going to stitch to just about where I have that pin. And this portion will be left open because we are going to need to sew this one onto here and this one onto this side. This will be left open because that is where we will then be stitching this on to there. So we are going to go over and stitch that portion. And if you want, instead of pins, you can mark that with lightly with a pencil or something, but I'm just going to stitch just a little farther than what I have my pin. And I am going to backstitch just a little there to make sure that that all stays well in place. And now we are going to come down and we are going to stitch this one the same way. A little farther up here. Make sure I got plenty to open up back there but enough stitched on this end. And again, I'm going to back stitch. Move that pin. And I forgot to turn the sewing machine back on. Sorry. Better do that so that doesn't happen again. Sorry about that. There we go. And now we are going to go ahead and we are going to press that out so that we have our sections there to sew the other parts on. And we still are not going to remove the points on that yet. So now we have this funny, funny looking section here with you, you know, that out. So now you can see that we are able now to sew this section onto here, and we will be able to sew this section onto here, and we're going to have a funny looking L block. And then we will sew our partial seam on. And so what we are going to take, and we are going to stitch this one on first. And I can I can go ahead and remove that that dog ear out of the way there now on both of those. You don't have to leave that there. We're not going to be lining anything up on that. Oh, and I need to put it back because I moved it and I want to make sure I put this on there correctly. That way. Bring it back down. Always make sure if you move something and redo something, make sure you didn't get it turned around in the process by laying it back down on your design board and make sure that you still have everything going the correct direction. And you see there is a tip on this side again, so I'm going to sew it from that side so I don't cut my tip off. And this looks really strange because of the bias and everything, but believe me, it will be straight. Reach under there. Bring that back where it belongs. So, so far, it hasn't been too difficult, has it? Yeah, I noticed that, Andrea, after, but we're sewing it the same way so 
I think you you got the gist of that. <laughs> and I'm going to press that seam up. Oops, almost set my iron on there. So now we have that one up there. And now we are going to flip this one and stitch it the same way. And because we have that point, I'm going to sew it from this side so I don't end up cutting off my point. Making sure we have everything lined up. I don't have a director, Andrea, <laughs> to say, hey, you know, lights, camera, action, wrong camera, don't have it on. <laughs> oh, and I do not edit and I don't have another piece to, I don't want to unsew it just to to show that obvious straight line of stitching so it happens yes grandmother's puzzle however the block that i am doing i actually designed from the individual block it is not one that you will find i kind of looked at it and i thought who i think if i make those four of those blocks and rotate them, I can come up with a secondary design. And so I named it Grandmother's Puzzle in Bloom. <laughs> but, okay. So now we have this section and we need to add this section in here. And we have these straight edges now and nothing is, you know, this is still open. Don't worry about that. You're going to take and flip that over. We have, I was going to say, I think we have one area to line up here. We are going to make sure that we line those two seams up. So I'm going to stick a pin in that portion. And then I'll take my hands out of the way before I take it to the sewing machine. And I'm also going to stick a pin in that and down here to make sure that we keep everything lined up. So we have this loose back here. Don't worry about that. We are going to be sewing straight across here. And don't worry about your tip there either. And we want to keep that see how I've got that folded out of the way to make sure that I do not catch that in this seam And I can tell there is a tip there that's on the other side. So I'm going to be careful so I don't end up cutting my tip off. Hey. And Kelly says, okay, I get what you are doing now, Jean. Yeah, it's not, you know, when you... And we are going to press that seam up. But you see how it's, it really looks funny right now. <laughs> but I am going to press that up real quick so that it lays flat. And now you see we have this, this weird part in the middle here. And that is where now when we take it, and we flip it. Where'd my, where'd my, there we go. <laughs> we are going to flip it right over onto this where we have the same to line up as we did the other. That same little seam right there. And 
And again, you're going to want to make sure that you keep that out of the way back there. But I'm going to pin this. And you're going to have a section in that middle that is not going to be stitched yet. It will look really weird. But believe in the process. It will come out. And now we are going to stitch, making sure we have that flipped out of the way there. We are going to stitch right across here. Making sure that we have that not caught in there. Didn't act like it was moving, but it is. Oh, we we'll get that caught in there. It's that red part I don't want in there. So you just want to take your time on this. Be slow so that you don't catch anything incorrectly in that scene that you are doing right now. And we are going to press that up. Now, except for this funny part, I mean, see, you can see how our block is together and we just have a hole in the middle. We have a hole right there in the middle of our block. And that is the last seam that we just need to now flick that over this way. Line that all up. And we are going to go where we left off stitching back here, which my, it should have should have pressed that the other direction. That's too close to my, too close to my stitching, but I'm going to make it work. And that's just the seam allowance right there. I'm going to take a little clip to get that, get that out of my, out of my way right there. And so I can get back to where I left off stitching. Just took that one little stitch out. But now we are going to stitch all the way across there. And you see how that is lined up there. That's the last and final, last and final seam. And you want to make sure that you come back on that stitching where you left off just to make sure that you got it all in there very well. And make sure you have it all lined up. And I'm going to go back just a little bit there where we left that opening. There, it's just a little, little funny to line up, but just fiddle with it a little and you'll have it. Come to where you meet your other stitching where you left off. Go back. And when you open that, I got just a little close to my point, but that's okay. I'm going to, now I am going to cut these two little tips off so we don't have the bulk of that in our seam allowance. And I'm going to press that up. And you will see, and of course, I will press this better with my, my bigger, we're going to press that the other direction. Yes. 
you can kind of see on construction after you turn it over which way you want to press that. And I'm trying to make them all flat here. And now when we turn that over, and yes, I cut my tip off a little bit, but there you have the finished, the finished block. And that is the part that we just sewn. And I got a little close there, but it's all right. I'm not going to undo it. I'm going to leave it because I do not care. <laughs> you like that? But this is the top section of our block. This, where's my, where's my block to look at to make sure I get this all turned the correct way on the bottom. Which way I want. Where am I? And that goes that way. And this goes of this way. And we will sew this one, which I'm not going to take, I'm looking at the time, I'm not going to take the time to, to sew that because you know how to do that. And this section is sewn together. We're just going to sew it together the exact same way. We're going to sew these two together, I'm flipping it over, and then sew those two together, and you have your finished block. So that wasn't really that hard, was it? We are going to remove the sewing machine. We don't need that any longer. I'm going to bring myself back in here. And Lori Clark says she really likes this block. And Danielle says, beautiful Mama Jean. Let me see. Very cool block. Turned out pretty. Thank you, Kelly. So when you see that done step by step and worked out that way, you find out, oh, it seems scary, but it's really not that, not that hard to do. And uh, there is another video, which that I used because I found it that goes along with this block. It's another gal that is a YouTuber. And I did leave the link in the description box of this video. And I am going to, I am going to remove the spotlight on that one for now, which that's, that's not off on there. It's just the way I've got it in the picture. It looks like that's off, but once it's pieced, that would be lined up. It's just the way I have it laying on the board. That would all be lined up <laughs> there, but that's okay. But I'm going to remove that spotlight. And I'm going to show you that this is what I'm talking about that breaks that down. And she has a video besides showing that. So if you don't want to click, keep clicking the replay on mine to follow along again, when you're ready to sew your block, you have the two choices. You can either go back, rewatch me when you're ready to do it. And if you want to see how she did that exactly the same way I just did, the link for that is in the description box of this video. So now, before we are done, hello, Christiana. Welcome, welcome. It's great to see you. A beautiful block. Okay, you must have you must have been lurking for a little bit. I downloaded the pattern and we'll get it eventually. Yeah, it's not that hard, and uh, you know you can you can message me if you're having any problems. I will I will gladly help you with that. Anyone that is is having an issue. But I think if you just, you know, hit that pause button, take it step by step, as I just showed you, you shouldn't have a problem with that at all. Just remember to watch out on those points because, yes, I did. Can't even tell which one for sure it is right now, but uh, it's that one right there that I that I got just a little too little too close on. Lori says that she is heading for a nap. Started work at 5.30. Thank you, Jean. Have a great week, everybody. Yeah, it's a great weekend. And Danielle says it is lunchtime. But I am very quickly going to go over and I will turn this other one on so you can see all this as I am sharing it. But this is our second quarter um, project 
that we will be doing. We do one that takes three months to do instead of one month. It's optional. Everything that I do is optional. Nobody ever has to do anything. It's just things that are offered for those of you that want to do that. But we just finished. This was the first quarter's project. It was the jellied charm quilt that um, I designed the pattern on uh, EQ8. And you all got that and you should be completed with that. I don't expect it to be quilted by now, but you should have your quilt top done because, of course, it is the end of the quarter and the start of a new quarter. So that is the one that we did back there. And yeah, you can't see the entire quilt because it is rather large. But that is the one that we just finished and it was all quilting. This cute little new one, I usually make sure that everything is free on my Facebook group and the channel, but this one is a paid pattern, but it is a delightful and beautiful little pattern by Hatched and Patched called Peaceful Garden. We'll bring that up a little closer and you can see that it has applique in the middle with some embroidery and then the blocks that go around that have little embroidery in each one of them. So it is a combination of quilting, piecing, applique and embroidery all in one little project that finishes out at 12 and a half inches by 17 and a half inches. So what you need to do, those of you that want to do this um, pattern along this quarter, is you need to make sure, of course, that you get your pattern and then you need to gather the supplies that you are going to need for it. And that, of course, is DMC floss is what is listed on the back. You are going to need that or whatever your thread of choice is. I will be using the Valdani pearl cotton that I always do. So I used the conversion chart and ordered those and I have all those to do. Plus, I have some of the colors of the DMC floss if I want to compare them and see if I like one better than the other. But you will need that. You will need your applique needles. You will need embroidery needles. You will need some freezer paper for your applique. And it's not going to be, that's just for the template, to draw the template and uh, press on your fabrics and then cut out. Um, I will be doing it in needle turn applique. Uh, you can choose whatever applique method that you like best, or you can follow along. And if you haven't tried needle turn applique, I will be showing how to do that while we do this project. But it takes very, very little fabric. You will find you should be able to go to your scraps, as I did, and find all the fabrics that you will need for this project. So you are going to gather all your fabrics, and I have mine labeled what they are, which this is the stitchery squares. This is the skirt of the applique. This is the dress of the applique. This is her hat. This is the basket that she is holding. Uh, what is that? That is the wings. She actually, you probably can't see that on the pattern, but she has wings. She is an angel. And then this is the applique background that that is on and all the stitchery. And then these are all my all my um, ones that will be used in the squares that are around the stitchery in that that border. And you can um, do all those with five inch squares, including that outer border, are all done with five inch squares. There's going to be you know leftover, but and then this is my binding and my backing. But so I have all my fabrics ready to go so that you are going to need to do for June and you are going to need to do the um, applique portion in the center for June, April. What am I saying? It's April, May, June. For April, you're going to gather everything and you are going to do the applique portion of that. And then I will just give you a heads up on what the other months will be. And I will um, I will list that in the Facebook group also with a post so that you know what you are supposed to be doing. But that is April's assignment, which, of course, you're going to cut the fabrics also. Do the ap applique templates and complete the applique. 
And if you have time, start tracing the embroidery. That is what you will do in April. In May, you will complete the embroidery. And then in June, you will piece it all together and quilt as desired. So that is how that is broke down for the quarter. But just remember, you have three months to do this tiny little project. So those of you that choose to do that together. And it all fits nicely in that one little container there. So there you have it. You have April's block and how to put that together with that partial seam. And like I said, you have the option of just doing the one 12 inch block if you don't like doing that partial seam four times. <laughs> or you can do the grandmother's blooming star that I actually came up with on my own by using the grandmother's puzzle block. And those are both in the file section of the Facebook group. And that is where you will be able to find that and download that. I cannot put that. There is not a way to put that in the description box of the thing. So that is, is where you need to go to get that information. And good morning, Terry Capriol. Are you you must be new. I do not recognize your name unless it was one other time. I think you you uh, you may have just been in here lately, and I'm just not used to your name yet. And I also noticed that I missed Jean, my other Jean, Jean Roar. Welcome, welcome. It is great to see you. And I want to make sure that I didn't miss any questions. I hope with anyone had any along the way, but. Oh, and I finished before 12 o'clock. How about that? I was rushing here at the end to explain the quarterly because I thought I was was going to go overtime, but but I did well in getting that all completed in time. And I hope that that some of you that were a little leery about partial inset seams now realize it's not as difficult as as it is. It just looks really strange and really weird, but they are really it takes a little finagling, you know, with the, the fingers and everything, keeping everything out of the way. That's the hardest part of it. But when you just break it down into the sections like we did in the beginning, it comes out really very easy. So thank you, everyone. Yes, you are new. I thought you were new, Terry. So welcome. It is great to have you join us. I'm glad that you found the channel and I hope that you enjoyed it and hope that you will return and come back. Thank you. But and for those of you that haven't hit that thumbs up button, please be sure and do that. And if you do go back and watch the replay, leave a comment. Those always help with the al algorithm in getting um our videos and content pushed out by Amazon. Truly appreciated when you do that. Even when you, if you want to just put a hello, Gene, in the comments, that that helps. But, and of course, the thumbs up button. But, and Andrea is saying, bye everyone. See you around the tube. Have a blessed day. Thank you. And have a blessed weekend, everyone. I know it's, it's Friday. It's not Saturday yet, but this is my last opportunity to wish you a very happy weekend. Take care. Happy stitching. And remember, in the meantime, I can keep you in stitches. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>